This is Sideline Radio with Shaki Verado, bonus episode number four, five fundamentals to epic fundraising. <whistles> donuts, get your fresh donuts for sale. You're listening to Sideline Radio, a podcast by Sideline Society, where we firmly believe it takes a village to raise a child and a sideline to support an athlete. In a lifestyle where schedules are hectic, to-do lists are overwhelming, and it's always time to go, sports mom of three and sideline guru, Shaki Verado, will help you navigate your life on the sidelines and redefine what organized chaos should look like. Here's your weekly ticket to take a time out, huddle up, and hear real talk from others who get it, while learning the best tips, hacks, and strategies on the sideline one season at a time. If you're ready to tackle your crazy schedule and make memories instead of migraines, you're in the right place. Here's your host, Chief Sideline Hacker, Target Enthusiast, and French Fry Lover, Shaki Verado. What's up, Sideline Hackers? Shaki here, the one that rhymes with hockey, and it's short for Shakira, like the singer. And I am here to help you navigate your life on the sideline one season at a time. Welcome back to Sideline Radio. It's Friday. Let me be the first to say happy Friday and to officially thank you for taking the time out of your day to listen in. I truly appreciate you and your support. I'm back with another edition of Take 5 Friday, and today we're tackling the five fundamentals of fundraising. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, (laughs) I meant to sound dramatic, but just because I'm being extra, but don't worry. It's super simple, and I'm going to give you my top five ideas for fundraising to boot. But before we jump into Fundraising 101, I got a quick announcement for you. You know what? I know what it's like, rushing from point A to point B to get to practice, games, and training on time, trying to figure out other options to help fuel your athlete that doesn't come with a toy. You sometimes feel a bit overwhelmed and discouraged, like you have to go at it all alone. But you know your child loves to play, and you want to make sure you can be there to support them in the best way possible. You probably throw together whatever is in arm's reach just before you run out the door to make sure you don't miss warm-ups. Trust me, I get it. That's why I wanted to put together an easy step-by-step tutorial to living life as a sports mom and building the ultimate sports mom survival bag. Call me obsessed, but I set out to make a show and build a community around this amazing lifestyle that we live. And I know that this one resource will be a game changer for helping you shake off the stress and living, loving, and rocking your life on the sideline one season at a time. So this show is brought to you by our totally free guide, the Ultimate Sports Mom Survival Guide and Survival Bag Checklist. You can get your hands on it at sidelinesociety.com. That's right. A guide that will get you started, help you to understand your role as a sports mom, and teach you to know how to be prepared for your life on the sideline, one season at a time. My biggest sideline regret? Showing up and not being prepared. So this episode is dedicated to not letting you make the same mistakes I did. Head on over to sidelinesociety.com and get prepped for sideline success. Now, what do you say? You guys ready to jump into today's episode? Let's do it. I'm feeling the need to provide a little disclaimer. Technically, if you belong to a year-round sports club, fundraising is a constant in your sideline life. But if you don't, and you're starting to prep for the upcoming season, well, fundraising should already be on your mind. Commonly known as one of those necessary evils, fundraising is a staple in youth sports. Most youth sports organizations are volunteer-based, so they depend on their ability to raise the funds to help them run their programs. First things first, our first fundamental, you need to create a clear plan. Now, this may sound like, duh, Shaki, of course you want to have a plan, but I seriously cannot tell you how many fundraisers are set in motion and those who are running the show can't even tell you what the goal is. So I cannot stress this enough. You need to know your audience and identify your goal. 
what exactly are you fund raising funds for? Why are you fundraising? I know it may feel like everything, but in reality, it may just be your end of season tournament. Many teams need to fundraise to cover costs associated with everything from new equipment and uniforms to travel expenses, trophies, and end of season banquets. Knowing your fundraising goal and what you're raising money for will help you determine how much you need to raise. Point blank, period. Fundamental number two, get support. If you've been following along for any length of time, you know that I am super passionate about my SOS, my system of support. Rocking a fundraiser is no different. It's a team effort. It takes a team. Just like your sport of choice, it takes a collective effort. Unless, of course, somebody has a generous uncle that you can hit up. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But seriously, don't think you have to do everything on your own. And that goes for my fellow team moms, too. Yes, you may have been appointed to help run the thing, but that doesn't mean you should be the only adult supervising athletes at the function, if you know what I mean. Let's go ahead and move on to fundamental number three, promote and teach. Simply put, nobody knows that you're fundraising if you don't tell them. Believe me, I get it. It's much easier to commit to donating all the money yourself than to get out there and beat the pavement asking for donations and trying to make the sell. But the more you continue to promote your organization and your fundraiser, the more eyeballs you get, the more ears you reach, which all equals more dollars in the bucket. The second part of this fundamental is to teach. Now, that's T-E-A-C-H. It's an acronym that I came up with, and it stands for transparency, expectations, accountability, communication, and having respect and appreciation for others. Now, as I mentioned, fundraising should be a collaborative effort. So just make sure that you are teaching at every opportunity. Not only will you build a stronger, more cohesive team, but it will in fact attract more donors. Just watch. People like to be respected, so treat and teach. Treat others as you wanna be treated and teach them appropriately. Moving right along to fundamental number four, celebrate your milestones and reach for the sky. Now, not to take a line from my good friend Woody, but there is no such thing as a fundraising glass ceiling. So go ahead and get creative. If you came up with a great alternative to a common fundraiser, or you have a great idea for a brand new one, but you're concerned because it's never been done, don't be shy, just go for it. You never know until you try. And then you can go ahead and hop on over to our Facebook group, Sideline Hackers, and tell us all about it, because your success is our success. And don't forget to celebrate your milestones. If you're doing a season long fundraiser or one that may seem like it is, it is helpful for your team to know how things are progressing. There's nothing like seeing the light at the end of a very long season. Last but certainly not least, fundamental number five is be consistent. Consistency is key. The more you give, the more you get. And I mean that literally and figuratively. The more effort you put in, the more you and your team will get out of it. And don't forget to evaluate how it went so you know what worked and what didn't work for next season. Now, I didn't wanna throw all of this at you without setting you up for success first. So you can head over to sidelinesociety.com slash podcast slash bonus four to get your hands on this handy dandy fundraising planner that I created that will guide you through each of these fundamentals. Now on the planner, I call them phases, okay? So it'll help guide you through each of the phases and it helps you lay out your plan step-by-step step to ensure for a successful fundraiser. There's even a little calendar widget in there so that you can see your plan visually, you know, big picture style. Okay, let's recap. Suggestion number one for fundamentals is to create a clear plan. Number two, get support. Number three, promote and teach. Fundamental number four, celebrate milestones and reach for the sky. And fundamental number five, be consistent. All right. Now with that out of the way, let's go ahead and change gears and talk about the different types of fundraisers. There are a ton of fundraisers out there. I've participated in my fair share, but it wouldn't be Take Five Friday if I didn't give you my top five favorite fundraisers to participate in. 
Now, I've put together a complete list of 16 fundraising ideas that will absolutely crush your goals this season. I put that together in a blog post over on sidelinesociety.com slash blog if you want to check that out. And of course, I'll link in the show notes to this episode to that blog post so you can make sure you check it out because not only do I list them out, but I also spell out how they work the materials you need, and I even rated them on this little value chart that I created to help you quickly identify which fundraisers will match your goals, your strategy, and your time commitments, which is a biggie. But for now, here are my top five, and these, I've placed them in order of awesomeness, (laughs) with one being the least of the awesome, is still very good, but is the least of my five favorites, and five being the absolute most awesome fundraiser, okay? All right, here we go. Number one, this is what I like to call the blankathon. No, it's not actually called a blankathon. More like I want you to fill in the blank with the name. <laughs> so, for example, it can be a walkathon for track and field, it can be a shootathon for basketball, a hitathon for baseball or softball, a catchathon for football, a spikeathon for volleyball. You can see that the possibilities are endless. But these blankathons typically take team mom power and equipment to put together, and they have the potential to raise a great deal of money. The added bonus, of course, is the active engagement of all the participants. And how it works, team members can get pledges from neighbors, friends, family members. These pledges can be a one-time donation or a specific amount per activity. For example, $5 per shot. All you need to do is arrange the location. It can be at the usual practice spot or a special venue. And you can invite family and friends to cheer them on. When the activity is over, the athletes collect on the pledges that were made. And that's that. I will link um, to the printable that I created that you can use to help collect the pledges for this fundraiser in the show notes to this episode. Moving on, my fave uh, raffle, I'm giving it away. My fave fundraiser number two is the 50-50 raffle. Raffles in general are extremely popular and probably because everybody likes to have a chance to win at something. And as popular as they are, they are just as easy to organize. So what you need to do is decide on what ta- what tactic you will use to hold your raffle. Maybe it'll be an individually based where each athlete takes 10 to 20 tickets to sell for a set amount each. Or maybe you offer them for sale at a home game where teachers, friends, and family can participate and purchase them. Each ticket will come with two stubs. One is placed in a jar and the other is kept by the person who bought it. And at the end of the fundraiser time frame, someone from the team will pick a winner from the jar at random. The winner is then awarded when, with half of all the money that was collected and the team gets to keep the other half. So I'm sure you can see how enticing this sounds, right? I'm pretty sure I've kept a ticket stub or two in my wallet long after the drawing just in case you know someone didn't show up for it. Okay, my fave fundraiser number three is the restaurant fundraiser because everybody needs to eat. We certainly do, especially after a long night or a late night practice. So go ahead and feel that need and raise it with the opportunity to earn some money from the profits of all the local restaurants that you know you and your teams like to visit and you have a win-win situation. Did you even know that most of the restaurants will actually share 10 to 20% of the total sales with your organization? for fundraisers like these, so they totally work. All you need to do is set up a night with the restaurant and get as many people to eat at that particular restaurant on the designated date and time frame as you can. Typically, the restaurant will ask you to fill out a form and request for your organization tax ID number. Some of the popular restaurants that do this type of fundraiser are like uh, Chick-fil-A, Chipotle, Panera Bread, or even TGI Fridays. Okay, my second to primary favorite, if that even makes sense. Okay, let's just say number four (laughs) favorite uh, fundraiser of mine is Team Spirit Wear. You got to know, Spirit Wear is one of the easiest items to sell for youth sporting fundraisers because everybody and their mama, okay, pun intended, wants to represent their team. I have a hard time not buying something in team colors when I see it at Target, let alone purchasing something offered for 
for for uh, spirit wear. So definitely spread the spirit, raise some money at the same time. Even companies, um, including local businesses, will work with youth, youth sports teams to manufacture and sell spirit wear. You can check in your area um, for those you know, promotional companies, and it's specifically for fundraising purposes. One of the ones that I've heard about is called Win Win Spirit Wear. You can Google them, but it's super easy how it works. Um, it's an online process. It allows you to pick up, pick your Choose your gar- your garment, you like your shirt or whatever you want to put, design it. You can control the pricing. And the best part is they don't have order minimums. You can order as few as you need. They'll use your logo, your mascot colors. They'll even provide an, a personalized online store just for your team. So you do the selling, they do the fulfilling, and a fundraiser check comes to your door in about two weeks. You have to say like that is perfect, especially too. your family and friends don't have to be close for you to make this work. Like you can just send them to the website and they can make the donation. They can get their spirit wear and you have a fundraiser. Now, it is important to note, especially in this case, that you need to be fundraising in advance of your season. And it's even more important to plan effectively. And this is because some fundraisers like these will take time to process. And I hate to see teams miss out on fundraising opportunities because they didn't have the items to offer. Parents go out and make them on their own. I've seen it happen. And I'm trying to tell you, don't let it happen to you. Last but not least, my absolute favorite, favorite fundraiser to do is super simple, but it's donations, asking for donations. And that's probably why it's my favorite because it's super simple. And the fact is a lot of people donate. Maybe it's because they don't wanna be bothered, but hey, I'll take it. But mostly people donate because people want to be able to give towards something. Case in point, if you're a team mom, you're donating your time right now. And that's why this is my favorite type of fundraiser. Everybody wants to support you and your team and your cause. So just give them a chance. Donations can be super simple. A lot of businesses and corporations, for example, are required to donate a percentage of their profits to nonprofit organizations. And it's part of their like social responsibility clause or something. So if you can get into the habit of asking for donations for your team, it could really benefit you. Here is where having a team website can really come in handy. You can set up an online e-giving option on your team website and capture any donations that come through. And as a little bonus, did you know that Facebook has a fundraiser section? I actually just found this out, but I went through it as super simple. So if you'd like to see a tutorial on how to use it, come on over to our Facebook group and just let me know. We can set that up. So there you have it. And now it's time for the post-game chat and a little encouragement with Stacey Mahoy of the Eating Curveballs for Breakfast podcast. Hey, sports moms, I really just wanted to give a shout out to you today and thank you so much for being here every single week, for being here on the podcast, listening and for being a human being. (laughs) That's a lot of beings, but for being a person who sees an opportunity to improve themselves, right? Sees a resource like this podcast that can help them get better and you take action and you find the episodes, the new ones, you press play and you listen in. That's awesome. You are such a rock star for being that kind of driven, of committed, of relentlessly pursuing excellence kind of person that's here listening to this segment of this podcast. I love it. I love it. Keep up the good work. You're amazing. You truly are a super mom. And not in the sense of being a super mom and having to live up to all these expectations that everyone else has and how most people think of being a super mom. I believe that you are a super mom because you bring your own unique value to your family, to your child, to your community, to your neighbors, to the world around you. And that makes you a super mom because you're you, not because of keeping up with the Joneses of super moms or doing everything or, you know, overextending yourself and being exhausted every day as a sacrifice to everyone else. Not in that sense. You are a super mom just because you are you and you're here doing whatever you can 
to learn and grow and get better on a consistent basis. And that's amazing. Thank you so much. I am so stoked and jazzed to be connected with someone like you. Ditto, Stacy. Ditto. That was so well said that I am not even going to follow it up with anything other than to say, don't forget to check out Stacy's new journal. She has one over on Amazon. I'm so proud of her. It is called Think Like a Champ, the awesome sauce journal for female athletes. And you can find it on Amazon. Of course, I will include the link to it in the show notes to this episode. And until next time, sideline hackers, keep hacking that sideline because they appreciate you for it. And so do we for all that you do. Thanks for listening to Sideline Radio. Dive into the show notes for this episode and all past episodes at sidelinesociety.com slash sideline radio. If you love the show, share it with the sports mom. Remember, it takes a village to raise a child and a sideline 